Now Pedro Marquez uh, from SND. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Madam Lacarte. We are indeed experiencing a monstrous recession, like nothing we have seen or experienced. The response from fiscal policy and monetary policy finally came hand in hand, as it was uh, needed for, for so many years. Still, the recovery remains at least uncertain, as you have already referred. Even in the current interest rates uh, environment, it is obvious that the room of maneuver to inflate even further the member states' fiscal policy action will be eventually limited in time, uh, at least on the current economic policy framework. Uh, and it will only be partially and slowly compensated by the recovery plan. On this basis, how do you see the evolution of monetary policy in the short term? I want to salute the ECB's statement of open-mindedness on the strategy review. But if the ECB has been persistently unable to deliver on the inflation target, are you open-minded on non-traditional monetary policies, in policy instruments that could be more effective in terms of transmission of the monetary policy than the current that you have been using? Also, keeping an open mind, what is the role that you see for the ECB to assume in terms of its position on the common debt to be issued by European institutions? Thank you. Well, thank you very much, um, Mr. Marquez, for your, your questions. On, on the latter point uh, that you just mentioned, um, I would like to advise you that we are trying to help as much as we can the Commission in relation to the SURE program, uh, the one that is intended to support member states in order to guarantee those uh, part-time unemployment schemes, the furlough schemes as, as they exist. And we have made some really good progress uh, to be able to respond uh, to, this, uh, to this SURE program and make sure that uh, we can actually um, provide the, 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 the technical backbone on which uh, SURE can be deployed. For the um, recovery and resilience facility, it's a much, much uh, broader enterprise and one where uh, clearly we don't really know exactly what the timetable will be, what the uh, periodicity of issuance will be, what markets exactly, how green those bonds will be, which we understand a, a good category will be. So it's more difficult for us to see how uh, and, and whether we can help um, on, on that particular front. On, on your previous uh, questions, I would like to say that, and repeat probably, that if there has been a good degree of efficiency, which has been actually um, noticed around the world, and that financial markets have also noticed, it's because monetary policy and fiscal policies at national and European levels have worked together hand in hand in order to address the exceptional circumstances that we have seen. My second point is that, as I said, uh, we are not out of the woods yet and recovery has to roll, not to stall. If the fiscal support that has been put in place was to be withdrawn, was to slow down, was to be restricted, or if there was a great discussion about that at the moment, I think it would be counterproductive. And if I can you know, give a, a message at this point in time, in addition to the fact that monetary policy will be attentive and will continue to be accommodative in response to the exceptional circumstances, is that fiscal support is absolutely needed and needs to continue to work hand in hand with our policies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, Ernest uh, Urtasun from the Greens. Okay, thank you, uh, Chair, um, and thank you, President Lagarde, for being with us. Uh, I have uh, two concrete questions. Um, firstly, on the uh, on the monetary policy review, uh, I would like to uh, to ask you if if you can update us on the on the timeline uh, for that review. I think that we've been discussing a lot this uh, this afternoon about that. It would be good to know uh, what which 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 timeline uh, are you working with? And then again to uh, to insist, uh, Pedro, I cannot concentrate on my question if you don't continue. No, no problem. Uh, secondly, I would like to um, sorry for the interruption. I would like to ask you for the. Um, 
Uh, also for a couple of things that have already been mentioned, uh, but uh, in relation to the decisions of the Fed, uh, in that revision, would you be uh, uh, willing to consider a, a flexible in, uh, inflation target? Uh, or also another thing that I, I think we haven't been mentioning yet, the possibility of having a symmetric approach targeting price level or the nominal, or the nominal GDP level as well. Would, can, will that be considered? Uh, and also uh, the issue of helicopter money. Uh, uh, are, are there any discussions in the ECB analyzing the technical feasibility of such a proposal? Because other central banks uh, in other areas have been working on that. And, and my second question relates exactly to what Mr. Marcus has uh, touched upon. Uh, you said that in both in relation to shore and both in relation to, uh, to the RRF, if I understood correctly, you are, have been providing technical assistance. In terms of the financial conditions that, did, that this debt emission uh, will, be, uh, will be developed in the, coming, in the coming months, what role, if any, do you foresee for the ECB? Because I think this is going to be extremely uh, important that the ECB uh, creates the necessary conditions for the, this debt emission to be successful, which, as everybody knows, is really a challenge. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much for your many questions. Um, on, on your first one, the um, strategy review uh, that uh, clearly will uh, tackle in particular the, our monetary policy, but also the communication of our monetary policy, the accountability of the ECB, as I mentioned earlier on, the timetable that we have uh, has been uh, extended a bit because we had to suspend our work during the the, 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 the peak of the uh, crisis and because simply all staff had to be completely focused on delivering and producing uh, the tools and implementing uh, the, um, the purchases programs that, that we had in place. We will be looking at concluding our strategy review in September 2021. By then, we will have another nine, um, sorry, is it nine or 11? I'm trying to remember because we have, uh, sorry, we have 10 work streams that are producing a total of 12 different seminars on multiple topics ranging from uh, the financial instruments, uh, the inflation measurement and trends, uh, to the impact of climate change, to the policy of communication, uh, to uh, uh, price stability, of course, and uh, and it is with with that sort of uh, timetable of successive seminars that we will wrap up probably with a midterm review around January, probably, and will complete the process uh, in in June of uh, 2021. Hopefully, by then we'll be able to have our um, Sintra. Um, usual annual gathering of uh, monetary policy experts, academics, and, uh, and members of the European Parliament as well. Um, so we will uh, we, we cross fingers and we hope that uh, the resurgence here and there of uh, uh, the pandemic will not stop us in that uh, renewed energy that, uh, that we are deploying in order to deliver on the strategy review. The second, uh, your second set of questions, which was multiple, um, brings me to a, a point that I would like to make, is that symmetry is a matter that uh, had been settled uh, by the European Central Bank and which uh, was actually, um, uh, if I recall, approved and, and uh, reiterated in many introdu introductory statements uh, read by my predecessor, um, President Draghi. So, uh, I know that there is doubt here and there as to whether, given the uh, the uh, the provisions of our um, price stability, which is close to but below two percent, whether the symmetry was measured with the same um, um, the same impetus or the same momentum, depending on whether it was below or from above. But my understanding is that at this point in time, even without going into a strategy review, symmetry is, is actually uh, something that had been already debated and approved. We will be looking at uh, multiple option, let, options, let's face it, because I did say that during the strategy review process, we would leave no stone unturned. So if there are alternative ways of measuring, if there are alternative definitions of uh, stability, if there are uh, various... Uh, ways through which to reach the price stability that we set for ourselves in order to better serve the European economy, 
and our European citizens, then of course we will look at all the options and uh, we will at the end of the day settle on what will best respond uh, to what has been assigned to us as a mandate under the treaty, which is price stability. Um, the ECB's uh, role, uh, you know, we, we, we are prepared to do what we can to help. Uh, and I think that we have advanced quite a lot on, on the, uh, the SURE program. Uh, it's far more preliminary and, uh, and I'm not sure that uh, uh, I can say much more than what I have said concerning the uh, recovery and, uh, and uh, resilience facilities, because as I said, uh, the periodicity, the volumes, the, the exact uh, intent uh, are not clear enough for us to be able to actually respond by offering services. If, if we could, if we have the, the, the capacity to, to do so, uh, we will. But I would also like to mention that even if we do not serve uh, as, as a backbone for technical purposes, uh, given that uh, we are allowed under our various purchase programs to buy uh, some of the bonds issued by uh, regional institutions, as we do with the EIB, and for instance, we will also be able to do that with the issuance by the uh, by the Commission. So this is another way of of helping indirectly, of course, but which is perfectly uh, envisaged and uh, and and encouraged.